What's up guys? I'm J Dub and today, well, the saga of the RT97L continues. I want to show you the test rig we've got, show you how we're testing it, you know, some of the things we're doing. I am still waiting on my repeater ID board to come in. Uh, guys told me they shipped it out the other day, so we'll see when it shows up. Should be a couple days. Come from California to Virginia. That only takes about two to three days to get it. But until then, we can still beacon it out. I can still put it on Zello if this was the ham radio version of it. Uh, that's another thing, guys. You can get this thing in VHF, UHF. Um, there's a few other ones that they're running. But if you were to get the ham radio version, we do have a wireless node that you could put it on Zello with. And uh, you could be, I don't know, let's say in Europe and still talk to your repeater back at your house via the internet. Pretty cool if you hadn't checked it out. Can't do it for GMRS because of rules, but you know, that is what it is. So I want to show you what we're doing, how we're testing it. Um, I've got it. It plays a message every five minutes. I think the message is like 30 seconds, 40 seconds long, something like that. It's a pretty long lengthy message. Right now I've got it in the house testing it on the 15 Oh, there's my phone on the 15 volt uh, wall wart and I want I put it in here just because I wanted to kind of since we noticed that issue if you haven't noticed the issue here's a short I did all right guys so I'm noticing a slight issue with this red of this repeater I just did it twice hopefully sometimes it fixes it on the third key we'll see right now you can kind of see it we are right here got it keyed up we're keying the repeater and nothing it's not transmitting. Can you guys see that? Try it again. Nothing. We're doing a long key up. Nothing. Third time. Nothing. Fourth time. There it goes. It took four key ups for this thing to finally kick back to us. And now, every time you do it, it starts working again. So I've been noticing that. It's done this now three or four times. Um, and it's always after it's set for a few hours. So if it sets for a couple hours with no one using it, it's not going to, well, it's receiving. But for whatever reason, the relay is not working. All right. So you can see I have it tested. We've been letting this thing sit all night. Let's see how it did. Yep. And it's still doing it. I don't know, guys. Something is definitely up. And as you can, I mean, you can clearly see that we're, we're set on power and it's not transmitting at all. There it goes. Now it's transmitting again. Interesting. I don't know what's causing that problem. But we're trying it on the 15 volt wall wart now and it is still doing the problem. So, oh, now it's only transmitting. Y'all just saw that, right? only transmit at that time yeah you can see in the in the short it's got an issue the issue is on 15 volts and it is on 12 volts so keep that in mind still working with red to see what we can come up with that but let me show you our test site so as of right now the rt 97 l is sitting here um just you know doing its own thing there's nothing going on it's pretty quiet we've got it just coming over here to a cheap little swr meter and a wall wart coming to a real cheap okay. piece of coax. This is the WRUJ 544GMR. There's the message repeater. it's playing. You can see it is transmitting. It's picking it up. Now, this message plays every five minutes. Here Kind of close to it. A lot of interference. But you, you can hear. It's playing this message. Um, the message isn't really that important. Like I said, it's on a dummy load right now. We are putting out... You can see right at 20 watts. Um, I do like this meter a lot better than the Shurcom. It seems to be more accurate. I've had a lot better luck with these than the Shurcom meters just because you can calibrate it a little bit better. But ever since I've been having it go off every five minutes, this thing has not missed a beat. It hasn't, you know, acted weird. It hasn't had that weird issue. But I wanted, uh, you know, you also want your repeater to be able to sit quiet for a while. So I don't know. This is the test rig we're doing. How we're doing it is with this node. So guys, this is a computer we're using. This is AnyDesk and we're using just this program. I've got it set there for five minutes. I could use my Simplex software and I could have this thing go off every, you know, every 15 seconds or however long it takes the message to play. I can make it go right off again. And that's what we do for heat testing. We you know, let it do that for a couple hours and we see how hot we get this thing. 
But right now I've got it set for every five minutes just to see if it gives us that weird problem. We'll keep increasing this time. So every couple hours I'll come down here and I'll increase this time until we get it up to an hour. Once I get it up to an hour, then we'll see, you know, does it start causing issues? Uh, if it doesn't after that, then we'll go to the Simplex software and we'll increase it every two hours, every three hours, every hour and a half. We're gonna figure out where, it, how long this thing has to sit before it gives that issue again. But the way we're testing it is with, you know, the board that me and my buddy made, we call it the TYT board. So this thing just sits in my basement and it's nothing more than a node. It is a TYT 9000D. It's got a fan hooked up to it. If the if this gets too hot, um, right now you can see it's on a dummy load because we're just on the other side of the house. Um, this is the computer that runs it. And this is the board that kind of makes the magic all happen. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see what it is. So it's just a board that plugs in via DB9. And these TYT boards actually have a DB9 in the back. You might, it's that gray plug back there. But this thing just sits here and it makes that repeater key up every so often for me. I can get on my computer and I can check it, make sure everything's working. Like I said, if the fan or if the radio starts getting hot, I've got it on low power with a real small dummy load. The dummy load, yeah, it's not even hot. Um, the radio itself, eh, not really. It's only putting out about eight watts as of right now on low power. So, you know, it, it's pretty mindful. It, it's a pretty easy little setup, but it's good for testing repeaters. The nice thing about this is guys, you can test any repeater out there. Um, my Motorola repeaters, I can test them. I've got a repeater across town. I can, if I want it to, I can hook this up. I can make it play weather announcements, date and time. If our club has a, you know, a meeting coming up, I'll make it play it over the repeater, you know, club meeting at 7 p.m. tonight. Or um, if there's a special weather advisor, like, especially if I'm home and I can, I can hook this up. If there is a severe weather, I don't know, a tornado coming in, I can make the repeater, hey, you know, special weather announcement, um, tornado, you know, tornado watch for the area, tornado warning for the area. Um, I can make it do all kinds of cool things and it's all right here from my house. I've got another wire that goes up outside, goes up to the roof that allows these things to talk back and forth. And like I said, if you had the ham radio version, you could put it on Zello. Um, I could make that a 70 centimeter radio. That one in particular is a 70 centimeter one. They also make them for the two meter and the 1.25 meter and they all work the exact same no big difference there you just change out your radio model but i wanted to show you all how we're testing it you can hear it. it it's testing again so let's go in here and look at it so it's been a few minutes been about five minutes so it's going again and you can see it's doing fine there's no issues with it this repeater's been doing good um, like I said, it's not getting warm, but it has five minutes to cool down in between each one. Another thing this cool little TYT radio does is it can do your beacon. You can set it to every 15 minutes. You can set it to every 10 minutes. You can set it however much you want. Um, you can make it be quiet. You can make it do, I've got a ton of videos on that. If you want to just kind of search through them, but, uh, it works really good for a beacon uh, like the, this radio right now. I have no way to make it beacon except the TYT board and that TYT board works with anything. Motorola, Kenwood, Icom, Yezu, Redivis, uh, who else? Midland. I'm, I'm trying to think. You you put a name down, I'm, it works with it because it works off sending a frequency back and forth. As long as that radio can hear that frequency, it works. It'll, it'll transmit, it'll do whatever. So pretty cool little setup. Um, it, like I said, works awesome. Haven't had any issues with it. Mine's been running now for gosh, two years, nonstop, no problems. I said it makes the radio in town do some stuff it, I, when i had the radios here at the house it made it do some stuff um if you want to have them close to each other put one on a dummy load it just helps out with like your front end and stuff doesn't kill anything and run everything on low power keeps your heat down stuff like that but even in town i just run it on low power and it runs up real bad coax all the way to the roof i think it's rg58 i'm all the way at the top and it still works out it's like two watts of power by the time it gets to the antenna but it works out fine um, I've got pretty good line of sight to my repeater. This is the little test rig. Just going to kind of sit down, show you all that, see what you thought of it. Um, and just let you know that yes, we are still testing this setup and I do think it's going to be a good setup once they fix this little bug. Um, once the other board comes in, we'll start testing that one. I'll do some videos on that also, but as of right now, this thing, it's doing okay. Like I said, but you got to keep playing with it. I do believe Redivis is going to have to do a firmware update. 
but we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out and what it all ends up doing. Um, I've got some more tests. We've tested on different frequencies. It seems to do it on every frequency. So uh, next test, I guess, is CTCSS tones. Finding out, does it do it on some CTCSS, CTCSS tones or does it do it on, you know, no C, it, it, it's gonna, this is gonna be a lengthy process. But guys, if you got anything out of this video, go ahead, hit that like button for me, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and like always, take someone outdoors.